And those five things are sleep, right? In the absence of quality sleep over two or three days, you're just going to fall to pieces. In the presence of quality sufficient sleep over two or three days, you're going to function at an amazing level. There's a gain of function and a loss of function there. Right? It's mm -hmm. not just if you sleep poorly, you function less well. You sleep better, you function much better. Mm -hmm. So sleep, I would say, is at the top of the list. Nutrients, you know, and there are, you can think macronutrients. And so your carnivores are only eating meat and your vegans are only eating plants and your, your omnivores, which is, I think, probably 90% of the world is eating a combination of those. But, you know, quality nutrients, I think that when I look at all of the nutrition literature and arguments out there, it seems that everyone can agree on one thing, which is that probably 80% or more of our nutrition should come from unprocessed or minimally processed sources. Minimally processed would require some cooking, but would survive on the shelf as opposed to packaged foods or highly palatable foods. So you've got sleep, nutrients, but then we should also put in micronutrients. And this is where maybe we'll get into a discussion about supplementation. I think that there's supplementation or supplements is a bit of a misnomer because it implies vitamin supplements. People say, well, can't you get all that from food mm -hmm. or that whey protein? Isn't that just food? Wouldn't you be better off with a chicken breast? Okay. Well, then when you talk about convenience and the, you know, absorption. Okay. But then there's this huge category of things ranging from the kind of esoterically named things like ashwagandha and shilaji and tongali and fadogia grass, I'm right? I mean, it sounds all exactly all the herbal <laughs> stuff, right? Yeah. You're not going to get that from food. Yeah. Totally. So should we call them supplements at all? Yeah. So let's just say the second thing is nutrients and that includes macronutrients and that includes micronutrients as well. Mm -hmm. So those two things, then the third would be movement, right? And this has also been an enormous transition in the last, I think, just five years, which is not just for people interested in bodybuilding or powerlifting or for competitive athletes, but now it seems everybody, including the elderly, understand that you need a combination of cardiovascular exercise and you need resistance training, whether or not it's with body weight or weights or machines, et cetera, that you need both. I mean, not a week goes by without seeing an article in one of the major publications out there, standard media, let's call it traditional media, We'll be nice to them. Traditional media that highlights some studies showing that, you know, resistance training in elderly people can offset Alzheimer's or, you know, or that as our friend Peter Atia has pointed out so many times that many of the end of life creating injuries are due to people, older people stepping down the eccentric movements. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so you need movement. That's the third category. Fourth, I will argue, and I like to think that maybe I've helped this movement, if you want to call it that, is light. In particular, mm -hmm. sunlight in the early part and throughout the middle of the day and trying to minimize the amount of artificial light that you're exposed to in the evening and late night hours, most of the time, because you have to live life. Just fundamental. And then the last category that's important is social connection, aka relationships. Let's just call it relationships because that can include relationship to self. Mm -hmm. So those things set up the core foundation. And I think one way to think about them is just as a list. Another is to think about them in terms of a, of a schedule basis. And that's how I've really doubled down is I realize that every 24 hours, I need to invest something into each one of those things. Mm -hmm. So I think that, you know, 10 years ago or five years ago, or even two years ago, I used to think, okay, like what's the workout split or how am I going to eat for the next couple of months? You know, what am I trying to optimize for? Is it muscle? Is it fat loss? Is it just maintaining? Is it energy? Is it focus? That's all fine and good, but sleep nutrients, exercise, light, relationships. Those really establish the foundation of what I consider to be all of the elements that create our ability to move as seamlessly as possible between the states that we happen to be in and the states we desire to be.